Greetings and welcome to a new video about circuit design. This is our third example. In this example, I will look at a different situation and we will use a graph for our design. This will be a little bit of a complicated example where we see more variables than equations. So let's see what we have to do. We, of course, we will look at the calculation step by step and also verify these in our SPICE simulations. Okay, what we have is this electric circuit given here. And the values of Vs, R1, R2, and R3, are unknown. And we need to determine that. So determine the values of these four components that will satisfy the relationship given by the graph for the load current versus load voltage. And the load voltage is here. That is across the load. The value of that is not known. And also there is a load current flowing through that resistor between node X and Y. So we have just our graph and our circuit. And we don't know much about it actually besides these information. Okay, what we need to do, well, let's see how we can tackle this. Let's see, look at the solutions. Now the equation representing this red line, which is a mathematical expression, can be given by this. So we can say the load voltage here on the y-axis and the load current on the x-axis can be given by this expression. What is this expression saying actually? It's saying the following. You remove the load and you look actually between the node x and y. You determine the Tefanen resistance and the Tefanen voltage. It is a dec decreasing line. That means it has a negative slope. It starts at 5 volts and it comes actually when the volts goes to zero, it uh, reaches 4 milliamps. So we can say, let's then determine the Tefanen resistance and Tefanen voltage because looking between the two nodes here will determine your Tefanen resistance. And by looking at the open circuit voltage here, you will also determine Tefanen voltage. So this can be determined by using Tefanen's theorem. So the Tefanen voltage is the open circuit voltage, as said before, and that is, in our case, directly shown here is 5 volts. Why? Because the current is there zero, and that means the current here in this load is zero. That means it's an open connection. Now, we can also say the Tefanen voltage between these two nodes, X and Y, is also given by the voltage divider rule. Since there is no current flow in R3, we can just ignore that that is just a voltage drop across this is zero that must be then r2 over r1 plus r2 times vs that's sh the expression shown here and that is also equal to five so five is equal to this expression and this will be then our equation number one we will use it later in a similar form we will do that for definite resistance rth now that is the slope of this but the negative of that slope so we need the resistance of this one and we need to take the slope of it and we take the minus sign of that value you see the slope it is going up by five and it's going to the right side by four so you actually see it is changing in the x-axis by five, four milliamps and it is changing in the x-axis y-axis i must say by five volts so we can say it is starting at zero, it goes to five, so it is then, actually I must say it starts at five and goes to zero, so it is then zero minus five, and it starts at zero milliamps, goes to four milliamps, and it must be then four milliamps minus zero. And this is the slope, this part, is delta VL, and this is delta IL, and this minus sign is required to get the definite resistance. Now, this is then 5 over 0.004. That is then equal to 1250 ohm or 1.25 kilo ohms. So we know now the Tefanen voltage and the Tefanen resistance. So we can now substitute these two values in here in the equation. So we have this equation. This is just an equation we know. And it's a straight line equation which has a negative uh, slope here. Okay, now let's move on. We can say also that the Tefanen resistance looking between these two nodes is R3 plus the parallel combination of these two resistance R1 and R2. Why? Because we disable the Vs when we determine the Tefanen resistance between the node X and Y. We have discussed these in great detail in the videos about Tefanen's theorem and also Norton's theorem. 
So when I move on, I can say this must be also 1250 or 1.25 kilo ohms. So I have also another equation here. This expression here must be equal to 1250. Okay, we have now two equations, but still we have four unknowns. So we have four unknowns. That was the situation before we started. Now I have developed, or we have developed together, just two equations. Can we develop more? In this case, there are no any other, uh, let's say, requirements, so we cannot uh, develop any other equations. So we have only two equations. Now, in order to have a unique solution, you need four equations for four unknowns. So in this case, we have no unique solution. What we can do, we can select a proper value for two of the four unknowns. So you select, let's say, Vs and R1, and you calculate the other three, other two, and that will give you the solution for this specific design. That is possible, but of course it must be a proper value. I, was, I will discuss this shortly, why this is not possible just to take some numbers for these values for the components. So again, this is what we need. And this is of course written in this form that mathematically more convenient. So R1 times R2 over the summation of R1 and R2 plus R3 is equal to 1250. And the other equation was already given by equation number one. So let's collect this and move on. This is what we need. Now we can say there are some conditions because this must be together. So this part, the parallel combination of R1 and R2 and in, uh, in series with the R3 must add up to 1250. But if I make this, let's say larger than 1250, mathematically fine but practically i have a problem but then i have r3 which must be negative so if i take this let's say 1400 ohms then this must be minus 150 which is not possible which is not practical so i must have a condition which limits the value of the parallel combination of r1 and r2 which is less than 1250. of course this is also larger than zero you cannot have a negative value now, otherwise you will get the negative value for R3. That was the reason for setting up this condition. Now we have another condition. This is also larger than zero because of that. And it must be also less than or equal to 1,250. Because if you make this also, let's say 2K, then I must have here one minus 750 ohms, which is not possible. Again, not practical. Now, I also need a resistor for R3. 2 here, which is larger than 0. Why? If I make this short, 0 exactly, then I will have a short here and I will short actually the co complete connection here and there will be no current or voltage uh, going to the load in R3. So that is of course not what we want. So that is uh, practically not possible. So we have some conditions here and we need to satisfy these conditions also when we choose a value. So that is, that's meant actually by a proper value a proper choice for your components okay now if we select a very simple uh, value let's say r3 1000 ohms so one kilo ohms then we have the following situation you can use this formula you can say okay this is now what we can calculate by doing 1250 minus r3 which we have selected now there will be then 1250 minus 1000 will give us 250 ohms so the parallel combination of r1 and r2 must add up to produce 250 ohms. Now, there are many options, many ways to produce the parallel combination of R1 and R2 up to 250. So you can take any two numbers here and then try to get a 250 ohms. But more easy way and a more, let's say, fast way is to say, let's collect now and set the two resistor values, R1 and R2, equal to each other and make it 500 because two equal values two equal valued resistors in parallel. If you want to calculate the effective value of that one, that will be then divided by two. So in this case, you do 500 ohms for each of them. You divide by two, you get 250 ohms. So then we have the following. Now, since we know R1 and R2 also, we can now use this equation and we can say 500 over 500 plus 500. will be then one over two actually. So 500 over 1000 times Vs, we don't know yet, is equal to five. So we can now calculate also Vs, that must be then 10 volts. So it means we have now everything. So in summary, we can say 
R1 is equal to R2, which is 500. R3 was 1 kilo ohm. We have selected. And also our Vs is 10 volts. So we have now everything for this uh, design. And that is actually also what we have, uh, what was required for this example. Of course, we need to verify this. We don't know uh, yet if it is really doing the job. So let's look at also to the results in the uh, simulations. Now, this is the simulation result. You can see the following. I will start first with uh, the load resistor equal to the Teflon resistance. That is for the maximum power transfer business. We have discussed that. Now, this is the circuit. You see the R1, R2, Vs, and also the R3. Here's a current arrow for measuring the current in this branch. And this is a voltage pin or voltage meter at this node with respect to ground. So I see 2 milliamps and 2.5 volts. Why? Because when I make a Teflon equivalent circuit of this part without this load, that was producing an open circuit voltage of 5 volts. You can see that also from the graph. If I now add to the this node or connect to this node a load resistor which is equal to the Teflon resistor that will of course give me half of that Teflon voltage which is then 5 over 2 which is then 2.5 so this is also logical that we have a 2.5 here and also half of the current because we, we ha now have 1.25 k kilo ohms in series with the 1.25 K, which is the Teflon resistance, in total 2.5K. So we get two times the resistor, which means two times smaller current. So not four, but the two milliamps. This is just a condition for power, maximum power transfer, of course. What we want is to look at this curve and that this circuit is doing the job for this curve. So let's move on. And this is, uh, again, the situation for two milliamps. We have a load voltage of 25 Volts. And this is the maximum power point actually. So for 2 milliamps, 2.5 volts. And that will produce 5 milliamps by multiplying actually these two numbers. So you cannot get more power out of this circuit for these conditions. Okay, now if I now short this, that is actually another extreme case. So you short actually your load, you make it zero, you can see it. That will produce now 4 milliamps in this load and the load voltage is zero. When does this happen? This happens when you decrease the load voltage to zero and you look at your graph, you get four milliamps. And that is this point. So we actually proven that this node, this point is actually coming from this circuit. And that is for these two values. When you short your load. Now, this is also shown here. And this is then the short that load condition. Now, when I go to the open load, Condition that means I disconnect this and make it open. So you will get this situation. So you make it open. There's an, uh, there's an open connection in the simulator. You see zero amps, but five volts now across these two nodes. Now that's exactly what we see here. See? So these two values we get. And this is now the uh, open loop, open load condition. So zero current load, but it must, it produces five volts. So we have checked actually the two extreme values of this graph, but we don't know yet what's happening in between. So it could be that this is doing this funny business. It could be the case. So I need to check that in more detail. So we need to also make a plot of this. So let's move on and try to illustrate this also using other graphs. So we can now do that. And I will show you how to do that in the SPI simulator, a plot which will give you an X axis load current and the y-axis load voltage. You can see the graph here. So it is at four milliamps here, it is zero. And approximately at that zero amps, it will produce this five volts. So you can see actually this curve is not going all, all, all the way to that point. So you can see if you uh, move the data part, you can see it is for zero amps, five volts for the load voltage. And you can also see the maximum Power point that is a 2 milliamps and it will produce 2.5 volts. And this was for this case. Again, what we have determined and for this circuit. So you, you see, it is really doing actually also in between what is expected from this red curve given originally at the beginning of this example. We can also look at the 
situation for the power. Now, this is the curve. If I now sweep the load resistance from zero all the way to 50K, so a really large number, the load current will start at 4 milliamps, as expect, expected, uh, uh, as uh, of course uh, we have seen. And then we see it is declining and approaches actually a zero amps. So asymptotically. Now the voltage, load voltage start at zero and also it cr increases, but then sort of uh, starts to increase very slowly and then approaches asymptotically that five volts. Now the multiplication of these brown and the blue curve will create this pink curve and that will give me the maximum value here which is at 1.25 kilo ohms which is our load resistance and we have determined that this was our tefanin resistance and this is also 5 milliamps you can also see that here i will also show you how you produce produce this uh, plot in spy so these are the plots and this is the circuit we have now let's now look also in the spy simulator how we can generate these plots that's also very really helpful when you want to do other uh, analysis for other circuits so let's now jump to spies and also discuss the circuit in more detail there all right we are now in the spy simulator i already prepared the circuit for you so vs of 10 volts r1 and r2 of 500 volts uh, ohms and there is r3 of 1 kilo ohm and there's a current arrow here to measure the current in this branch and there's also load here in this case it's 1.25k just for power maximum power transfer and this will measure our load voltage now what we want is to re uh, really illustrate that this is really doing the job uh, and that slope what we have seen in the exercise is really also produced by this circuit now we can first do analysis and DC analysis and going to the DC transfer characteristics first. And that's done here. Now I need to select here an input, which can be R1, R2, R3, or VS, or load. Now I will now sweep the load and also see what kind of effect it has on the power transfer. Let's start with that one and then make the plot of load current versus load voltage. So I can start at zero and then plot all the way to one mega ohms or maybe uh, another large value and then see what's happening so let's do that now the curve is now shown here you can see going from zero to one mega ohms this is input resistance it says actually simulated but it is of course the load resistance so let me make that and also make the font larger so you can see it easily okay I have also the output, but that is, of course, the uh, output of for each one. So we can say, let's separate them because we see two curves here. And you can see this green line, it was in our case blue. So let me also make it blue just for, this is the load voltage. So it starts actually here. So I can see, show you that a little bit easier by doing the 10K. So you can see it, it is actually starting and then approaches that 4.99, 4 actually 5. And it is actually starting at 4, this is the load current, and then going down. So let me also make this larger for better and better visibility. And also this one for better visibility. Okay. So if I now again go up, so for example to 100k, You can see it really approaches that value. You can also see that from the cursor. So click a cursor here and then click on this one. You can see when I increase the resistor, this is the resistor value, X value. And this is the, the, compo the value of the load. You can see it really approaching that 5 volts as expected. Okay, <clears throat> now I want to show you also the power. Power is multiplication of this blue and the, uh, the, the brown line the current and the voltage of course now what we can do is we can go to post processing and then use these two curves and multiply them together you can do that here by going here so go down so click on this go down and then times and do basic uh, built-in functions you can add them up or multiply etc this is multiplication and then select this one and click on this one to go down 
and then create a new function. Now I will call it load power. You cannot have a, a space here, so you need to actually use an underscore or something like that. So I will create it. It will, it will now create it. Now it is created. If I do OK, then I will see the plot. Now you see the plot. It's not really visible what's actually happening. But let me now make again the, the load resistance smaller. Let's say 10K. You can see again the value here, which was in our case pink. So let me also make this pink. And I can get that maximum value of the load power by going to the cursor and click on that pink curve and click on this right mouse click and then jump to global maximum and you see directly at this value in this case this is just rounding off error is we get 5 milliwatts so exactly what we have expected okay now let's then move on to another situation where we also want to plot the load current and load voltage so we have now seen the load power the maximum value but we can now also make that plot what was actually the uh, given plot in our exercise. Now again, you do post-processing. You go here, but now you need to make an X, Y plot. So I will click on this one. I will call it, uh, now let's call this load uh, current. Let me do it uh, next to each other. Versus load voltage okay now i will now this is the, just the name i will now give here the x which is then our load current so i will click on this and go here and here this will be then the y part then will be then this one and click on this one so i will now create this it will now create it now that will be created in a different uh, part of it. So this is actually shown here. So this is the green part. Let me make that, um, nah, keep it green, it's okay. Let me make it a little bit thicker. So you can see it here. So what's what's actually the x axis? That's actually our load current given actually in, in amps. And I can also do that, which is the load voltage. load voltage and that is also shown here now what you see is the following this is actually exactly the same curve as we have seen in our um, example because let's bring that uh, plot here also and show you directly that this is indeed correct okay now let's paste that curve also here this is it so you can see it it is starting at 5 volts for zero load current 5 volts for load voltage and it goes down and then becomes zero load voltage and then becomes four milliamps for the load current what do you see here it's exactly the same so we have actually proved also for two milliamps you see 2.5 volts for the load current again the load maximum uh, power point is also shown here and proven that this is indeed the plot what you get for from this circuit so nice to see that the simulation also pr uh, proves our uh, and verifies actually confirms our calculations. If you have any questions about this exercise, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. Of course, we will move on with many other many other topics. So we will also discuss analog electronics circuits, etc. In different uh, playlists, I will also work on that one. Stay tuned and. Don't forget to like and share all these videos so that we can reach more people for these interesting topics. Thanks for your cooperation and see you next time in another video. Take care.